love walks into my house and turns the lights back on. Love walks into my doubt when trust is all but gone. Love runs into my heart and tears the finish line. Love runs into my scars and heals them every time, every time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you. 
Solo Worship Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. We've done four of them so far. And it's pretty great uh, just to be able to do this and kind of gets folks into a studio that, anybody ever been in a recording studio before? Yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm like, whatever, it's fine. I, I love, I'd rather be out playing live shows. And, but the recording studio is a necessity, so you kind of have to do it. But it's neat for folks that haven't been in the studio before because they get to come in and see all the, the knobs and the levers and all the stuff that they can't touch, you know? And, uh, and then so they just sit in the room with me and we just kind of make records. And it's been really, really neat. So I wanted to kind of bring you guys into that experience here tonight. So um, this last one, there were a couple of tunes that I recorded and uh, I want to just share one with you now. One or two? Let's see. Yeah, one. Maybe two. And uh, so just imagine yourself sitting in the recording studio and there's a grand piano in front of me here. It's much bigger, usually about eight or 10 feet. <laughs> and, uh, and I always tell people, hey, no, no sniffling, no coughing, uh, no sneezing. And then we just kind of let God do his thing through the, through the tape. So this is a song, I just love this tune. It's a song called Christ Be Magnified. Be mad. 
good one. I, uh, when it first came out, I think it was probably about eight or nine years ago now, maybe 10 years, I was immediately attracted to the name of it because I'm a big fan of nautical themes. Anchors and waves and oceans and all this kind of stuff. And uh, so I checked it out and I was like, yeah, that's a really good song. But then they got to this bridge, and I don't know if you guys know this bridge or not, but um, this is a, it's a very convicting set of words, basically a prayer uh, in this bridge. You guys know it, it says, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. It's basically a prayer to God just saying, hey God, uh, I want to trust you more. And uh, I just want you to take me out deeper and deeper. <laughs> Which is a very hard thing to pray every single day. But if you pray it every day, I guarantee your life will start shifting in different directions. And you may not see where you're going, but the beauty of that is, is that we can just stop and trust and walk with our Father and say, Jesus... I don't know where this is going, but I want you to take me there, right? Faith and trust equals surrender. And so we have been praying this in my family for a couple of years, a bunch of years back. And uh, I've been doing this full time now for the past three and a half years. And we started in uh, October of 2019. And uh, so my wife and I have been praying because I had a full time career, super, super comfortable. Um, I was in New York City every day working right on Broadway for a record company. It was awesome. And uh, and then this kind of side business, I was doing that full time and then doing this full time. And uh, the two careers are just kind of like going back and forth. And I was like, well, which one's going to win? And I knew which one was going to win because just the way it was. So we started praying this prayer. Hey, God, where do you want this to go? And do you want this to be full time or not? And so... Um, October 1st of 2019, I get called into my boss's office, and he says, hey, uh, you know, there's been a change of regime up top, and your position has been eliminated. And I literally started laughing. And he was like, are you all right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. What do we got? How many hours time? And he said, so we worked out the deals. And I went back to my office, and I called my wife, and I said, hey, you know that prayer that we've been praying for the past couple of years? Today's the day. And uh, it was unbelievable. And I, and I just literally walked away from that career, and... Uh, we just started this, and we started doing this full-time. I never thought in my 50s that I would be like touring full-time up and down the East Coast in a Honda Pilot, but here we are. God has a very good <laughs> sense of humor. And so, <laughs> so I say all that to just say, um, you never know where God is going to take you. Because now that we've gone full-time, so here, let me give you a little more of a timeline. So October 1st, 2019, we start, okay? Book a bunch of gigs. It's great. The first six months, if you know anything about your calendar, the first six months was amazing, right? And then we had over 100 shows booked for 2020, and then March hits. And I was like, all right, hey, God, now what happens? <laughs> so we immediately pivoted to, um, to live streaming about four or five nights a week during the pandemic. And I had a lot of people just say, man, those live streams got me through the pandemic. We saw people come to Jesus on live streams on Facebook and YouTube. It was just unbelievable. And we built this community, and now I still have all these folks inside of this community that we've built. It's just been amazing. And we started doing um, these outdoor events. I called, them, I called it the Backyard Worship Barbecue Tour. And so we socially distanced and wore masks, and people brought barbecue some nights. And it was crazy. And then, so we went from, you know, I had all these gigs booked inside the church. And, uh, and then God was like, no, 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 we're going to go outside. So we started about six months after COVID hit. We started going outside to parks and parking lots, and um, backyards, and just all these places. And we were seeing people get saved in driveways, and people getting saved in parking lots, and it was just wild. So we kept going for year after year, and I'm doing it again this year. We're out doing backyards and parks, and it's amazing. But just God continues to just kind of, I had this great plan, and he was just like, yeah, that's not what I'm thinking. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I want to be obedient. I want to just do this. And so now we do all these indoor, outdoor shows. We play anywhere I can possibly play. We play. So I say all that to say, if you want to come to your backyard, let's talk about it after the, after the show, right? <laughs> Dead serious. Absolutely serious. Um, but I say all that to just say this. This prayer that we're about to sing together. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. I never thought in a million years that I would leave this very comfortable job 
to start winning souls for Jesus and start telling people about Jesus and just seeing more lives get changed and changed over and over again. And yet here we are. I'm in Bristol, New Hampshire tonight, of all places, right? <laughs> so it's just amazing to watch God work. So I say all that to just say this. When you sing this prayer tonight, you guys want to stand up as we sing it? Come on, let's stand up. And uh, just close your eyes. If you want to raise your hands, you can do that too. But it's just, it just says this. Father, tonight, Spirit, lead us where our trust is without borders. Let us walk upon the waters, Father, wherever you would call us. No matter what stage of life we're in, you can use each and every one of us in this room. And so, God, tonight I just pray that we be obedient to your voice and obedient to your call. And Jesus... Just move amongst us here in Bristol. Come on, let's sing this out. So I wrote this song called The Love of Jesus based on um, that passage in Romans chapter 8 where it says there's nothing on earth 
that can separate us from the love of Jesus in our lives, right? You believe that tonight? Yes. yes. And so, um, so we're singing this song, and the chorus just says how deep and how wide and how strong is the love of Jesus. And by the third night, these kids were singing it at the top of their lungs, which is amazing, but they also started doing these hand motions. And I was like, I stopped the song in the middle of the song, and I said, what are you guys doing? And they said, oh, we, uh, we made up hand motions for your song. And I said, perfect, teach them to me. So they did, so I'm going to teach them to you guys here tonight. Is that okay? <laughs> you up for that? Saturday night, Bristol, come on. Woo! Yeah. So, uh, it's real easy. We say how deep, and we go like this, how deep, right? And then how wide, kind of push your neighbor a little bit if you want, it's all good. And then how strong, right? If you got that t-shirt on, roll your sleeve up so we can see what's going on right here. Is the love, that right here, buddy, yeah, of Jesus, right? How deep. And how wide and how strong is the love of Jesus? Let's try it. How deep, come on. How wide, how strong.
get that, all right? Go home, look up Romans chapter 8, verse 25, we're on there, okay? Have your mom and dad read that to you tonight, okay? You guys want to come up here and show everybody how you guys are doing? Well, come up, come on. Come on, man. Bring your sister up, come on. All right. Josh and Ellie. Come on, turn around and give everybody. Right, give me the hand. Alright, let's sing it again. It goes with every single day of our lives, every year. Because this song, it's about fear, yeah. I mean, fear has taken this front seat in, uh, in our society over the last couple of years, and it shouldn't get as much credit as it gets, but it does. As God tells us not to have a spirit of fear, but a spirit of hope and love and joy. And so, uh, fear, stress, anxiety, worry, all of these things just kind of get in the way of our walk with Jesus, right? Anybody struggle with fear, stress, anxiety, worry? Anybody? Yeah. One person. Oh, okay, good, good. good. Right. Honestly, you have to be honest. We're in the church, okay? Can't lie. Um, we all do. Like, we all struggle with fear and stress and anxiety. It's just something that just, just gets in the way. And the beautiful thing about a walk with Jesus is just, hey, he's always there with us, ready to just kind of put his arm down and just pull us out and say, I got you. This is a song about that back and forth. It's a song called Fear Not. When there's no hope to find 
get involved with what I'm trying to do. Anyway, so um, I'm thinking about that and I'm, I'm kind of trying to write a chorus and, and I come up with this idea, you know, undertow, and I'm getting caught in the undertow, getting pulled down by the waves. And, and I'm watching these kids and, and thinking about all these distractions and it reminded me of my Sunday school teacher and a story that she told me years ago. Any Sunday school teachers here? Yes, let's hear it for them, come on. Yeah, I'll tell you why. So, my Sunday school teacher uh, was a woman named Mrs. Benson. She was amazing, she was like 80 years old for like 20 years, she never <laughs> aged. <laughs> so, I, uh, she was with all of us, we were like 10 years old, and she's trying to teach us this story about these guys that were out on this boat. It was dark, it was cold, cloudy, windy, and uh, they're hanging out in this boat, and they see what looks like a ghost kind of walking towards them. You guys remember, anybody from Sunday school remember this story, right? <laughs> so they see this ghost walking towards them, and Peter, he calls out, and says, hey, Jesus, is that you? And Jesus is like, yeah, it's me. If you believe it's me, come on out. So Peter stands up, and he's like, Lord, I'm gonna come to you. And all the other dudes are probably like, bro, <laughs> where are you going? Like, what's going on? He's like, I'm going. So he stands up on the boat, they help him over, he puts one foot over the side, then the other foot over the side. They probably push him up, expecting him to just go, you know, just sinking. And he's standing on the water, and it's like this miracle happening. And he starts walking towards Jesus, and his eyes are laser focused on Jesus, right? And as soon as he looks away from Jesus, right, something comes along, wind, gust of wind or something, and kind of just pulls his vision away from Jesus, what happens? Thanks. Yeah. Sinks. And so here, and then Jesus reaches down and pulls him up. And here I am, I'm like 40 something years later, 42 years later, and I'm like, that story by Mrs. B is still super relevant. Because as soon as we take our eyes off of Jesus, what happens? We sink. We sink. So here we are, April 1st, and this is not an April Fool's joke, okay? <laughs> here we are, April 1st of 2023, still wrestling, right, with our time and with our energy and with hearing from God and all we need to do is just kind of stop, open up that Bible that he gave us and just spend some time in it every day. Easier said than done. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yeah. So anyway, I sat there and I wrote this chorus and uh, this is a song called Undertow. It's all about just that back and forth of this conversation.
And she said, uh, it literally saved my life one night. And I said, how? Tell me that story. And she said, well, I was about to use one night. And uh, she said, I looked down at my wrist and, and the bracelet was flipped over for some reason. And it said, there is hope on this side of my wrist. And she said, I looked at that, put the needle down, called my sponsor, and I was out of that situation in like 30 seconds. And I was like, Amen. man, it's just like power of God working through a tiny little face. Amen. Yeah, it deserves a round of applause. Sure, of course. <laughs> so we, uh, we just believe in hope. We believe in pushing hope deeper, deeper into our, into our schools, into our communities, into our families, and most importantly, into our kids. Our kids need the love and the hope of Jesus. Amen? It's just so important. So tonight, uh, if you want to join the movement, I've got bracelets back there and t-shirts uh, that say there is hope on them. But let me warn you, if you wear a t-shirt around that says there is hope, somebody's going to stop you and ask you, A, why you're wearing it, and B, if you actually believe it. And it's a great way. I, I have so many stories of late night hotel check-ins where you just have conversations with the, the clerks at the counter and all these different places. And, uh, it's just a great way to kind of gently share your faith. Um, so this is a song, I'm just going to give you guys the chorus, but it's a song called There Is Hope, and uh, it's dedicated to each and every one of us. We're all struggling with some kind of addiction, right? It could be food, it could be pride, it could be social media. I don't know where your addiction is here tonight, but we all have something going on. If you walked through those doors tonight and you said, hey, you know what? I'm good. You're lying to yourself. We're all struggling with something, and we all need the redeeming love of Jesus in our lives. So tonight, just close your eyes, just take a minute. Jesus, tonight, Father, I just pray for uh, honesty in this room, honesty with ourselves, honesty with our hearts and our souls, Lord. And God, I know that sometimes even just talking about this stuff is uncomfortable, but Jesus, you bring peace and strength and hope to us. And so tonight, as we kind of lean into this just a little bit, I pray that you just reach down Target our hearts and just give us a moment of clarity and a moment of focus. And we thank you, Father, for the hope that is Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's this song called There Is Hope. It's dedicated to each and every one of us. There's a hope.
Um, hey, let me leave you with a couple of things. One, uh, this is a full-time ministry for me. This is all I do. I travel from Maine to Florida and back, and I tell people about Jesus in the only way that I know how, which is through worship and through song. So if you want to support what I'm doing and how I do it, uh, best way to do that, stop at that table back there. We've got CDs and books and bracelets and uh, T-shirts and all that stuff. You can check it all out. Um, anybody here drink coffee? One, two people, three people? Yeah. We started a coffee company a couple of years back, and our motto is drink coffee and change a life. Uh, for every bag of coffee that's sold, we donate a portion back to helping us sponsor kids, uh, like the, the kids that we had up here tonight. So um, it's great coffee, roasted in upstate New York. It's really, really good. This batch was just roasted last week, so it's really fresh. Uh, and it's from Ethiopia, I believe, tonight, so that's it's a really good one. Uh, and then finally, just thanks. Thank you for supporting Christian music in the area. Um, hopefully I'll be back soon, yes. and uh, we can do it all again. All righty? Let me just close this out in prayer, if that's okay with you guys. Yes. Father, tonight, Lord, we thank you for uh, just the ability to worship you. And God, um, it's just an honor uh, to know you. And Lord, I pray that just we would have shifted and changed just a little bit here tonight because we came in contact with your spirit. And so God, use us as we exit those doors. Uh, just let us be the love and the hope and the kindness and the compassion and the mercy of Jesus in and around uh, our little circles that we, that we run in. So God, thank you. It was a great uh, night tonight, a great safe trip home. And we just pray for this coming week as we get into Holy Week, Father, that we would just stop and just remember uh, the sacrifice that you made for us. And God, we thank you for it. Who are we that you would be mindful of us and yet you are? We love you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen guys. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your night. Take care. Finally